think that it would be fair to say that July the 2nd of 1863 was definitely a challenging day for the Army of the Potomac here on the fields of battle in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, on, the, on the Union right at, at Culp's Hill, there had been some vicious fighting. Uh, on, on their left, uh, under the command of James Longstreet, their flank almost got turned uh, in places like the, the Wheat Field and Devil's Den and Little Round Top. Uh, there was a debacle with uh, Dan Sickles where his line had gone out too far and they were having to, to move troops around, so it was a little bit chaotic. Well, at nine o'clock on the night of July 2nd, Meade called together a council of war with 11 of his subordinates right here at his headquarters at a place called the Leicester Farm. And they were going to decide here what they were going to do the next day. All right, well, I've just moved up from the headquarters on top of the hill here. And uh, behind me, as you can see right here, is a monument to General George Meade. And there, there was one thing that I wanted to point out here before uh, I, I showed the house. A lot of people may not realize just how close to the danger General Meade's headquarters was. Uh, if, you, if you look at that fish hook, okay, he's kind of like right in the middle of the, the fish hook formation of the Union line. So just for the sake of reference, on the third day of the battle, there's going to be this massive Confederate artillery bombardment. This is going to be the high water mark right here where the Confederates uh, get up to. And right there is where George Meade's headquarters was. Now, to me, there's one leadership lesson that we can pull from this. Meade is the commander of the Army of the Potomac. Uh, so, he doesn't need to be so far away that he's detached and unaware of what's going on on the battlefield. But at the same time, he doesn't need to be on the front line either. Uh, if he gets hit, well, then you've decapitated your leadership. So, so he kind of finds this balance uh, right here at the Leicester farm. Uh, to me, man, it almost seems a little close, uh, but it worked out for him, so I can't, I can't be too critical. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and, and take a look at this house. Well, here is the home on the Leicester farm where General George Meade had his headquarters during the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, now, I've never seen this before, but uh, one thing that's striking to me is how small it is. Like, this thing is tiny. Uh, it's hard to imagine him holding a council of war inside. Uh, now, because of certain restrictions right now, uh, I can't go inside. We're gonna see if we can peek in the windows. All right, now what we are looking at right now is the room situated to the east. And uh, as you can see, it is quite small. Yeah, really pretty Spartan, not, not a whole lot to it. But there would have been a lot of excitement here, or a lot going on at least, uh, on those three days in July in 1863. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the uh, the other side now. All right, and here we are looking in the room to the west. Yeah, 
<laughs> so not not a whole lot to it but man it's hard to believe Meade and 11 of his commanding subordinates packing themselves into this small area all right so now uh, moving around to uh, what would be the the front of the house uh, I'm here so I might as well go to the front and see it from all sides so you can imagine Meade and some of the other core commanders like Hancock and some of the others uh, sitting on that porch and discussing what had gone on throughout the battle, making plans, sending out orders. Yeah, but again, I can't get over how small this is. Very cool. At around midnight on July the 2nd, after much discussion, uh, Meade decided to put the decision on what to do for the next day to a vote. And the general consensus amongst all of his subordinates was to, to stay and fight. Now, in the years since, uh, Meade has drawn a, a little bit of criticism for the manner in which he decided to proceed forward. Uh, some people suggest that that as the commander of the Army of the Potomac, uh, that he is the leader, he should be the one who is making the call. Shouldn't matter what anybody else thinks. He's the boss, what he says goes. Which I guess is one style of leadership. I think there's something to be said for the way that Meade went about things though. One thing to consider is he had only had this job for three days. So getting input from his core commanders and from some of the, the uh, division commanders, I think there's some merit to that. And also, by putting it to a vote and by uh, having his subordinates give input, he's doing something else. He's giving them ownership over their role in this huge struggle. So, I don't know. I think I lean towards Meade's style of leadership in this particular case, and it worked out for him. But anyway, that was Meade's headquarters at the Leicester Farm right here in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania.